Thanks for all coming here today outside of City Hall. And if we can just recap from last week, based on the reports of the waning days of Mayor de Blasio in office, it seems that in the aftermath of that devastating Department of Investigation report indicating that he was misusing his NYPD security tail detail both during the presidential campaign, his failed run, and to utilize it as a concierge service for his wife, for his daughter and his son. I noticed there were reports that he was walking through Greenwood Cemetery on a regular basis, sometimes in two-hour spurts. And I don't know, maybe he had his Michael Corleone moment from The Godfather, where he decided while walking through the pathways where some of the American Revolutionary War dead are buried, that he would settle all scores, settle all scores of what will be the eight years of his administration come January 2nd. And it's interesting that immediately on Friday, he decided to move forward and scuttle the gifted and talented program. And that's caused a lot of blowback, a lot of duress. In fact, the demonstrations continue right outside of the Department of Education, right behind City Hall, and rightfully so. But when it comes to the statue of Thomas Jefferson, this has been discussed before. In fact, it was former councilman, then assemblyman, then councilman. I'm losing track because of term limits, how he's bounced back and forth from Albany to City Hall, Charles Barron who began, began the effort to purge the city council chambers of really the father of our democracy, the author of our Declaration of Independence, Thomas Jefferson. But nothing happened. It was debated, and he remained in city council chambers as he should. And all through the lockdown and pandemic, as city council members decided to do their work from home or from their from their headquarters, and their staff did their virtual work from home or other locations, that city council chamber has been empty. So you would say, with everything that's gone wrong in the city of New York, is this really the most pressing issue in the city now in the waning days of de Blasio's failed mayorship? Removing Thomas Jefferson? And now, I noticed that in his Michael Corleone way, he once again turns to his partner, his wife, Charlene McRae, who, as we've seen before, is the head of the Commission on Racial Justice and Reconciliation and has made determin determinations on statues which can stay, along with 11 members, and which would have to go. And it's interesting that she was in the forefront of deciding that after a plebiscite, a vote of the public, that there would not be a statue in honor of Mother Cabrini. Thankfully, at that time, Governor Andrew Cuomo did an intervention and took over the project with state funds, and the statue of Mother Cabrini is safely down near the battery. But now, the Thomas Jefferson statue is scheduled for removal before city council on October 21st, it seems like it is a fait accompli. And I say to myself, where would this country be if we had not had 56 men who decided on July 2nd to sign the Declaration of Independence, calling out that we are free of the British oppression of George III? On July 4th, which we celebrate as our Declaration of Independence Day, and it's Thomas Jefferson who created the language. These men, 41 of them slaveholders at the time of the 56, signed their death warrants because the British were hell-bent on hanging them from the nearest tree. It's odd, as the mayor calls for the removal of Thomas Jefferson, he fails to look outside and see the beautiful bronze statue of Nathan Hale, who was a 21-year-old patriot, part of the Revolutionary Army, became a spy for George Washington.
was caught by the British and was hanged by his neck in Manhattan. And we remember those words. I have only one life to give for my country. And he gave it, as so many others did. Had any, any of the signers of the Declaration of Independence been caught at that moment, they too would have been hung for treason, for sedition. That's it. The next day, they would have been hung from the nearest tree. And what's odd is that one of those signers, in fact, he helped add a lot of the language to our Declaration of Independence, is Benjamin Franklin. He was in Philadelphia. His son was the royal governor in Trenton for King George III. On the day that Benjamin Franklin, who himself had owned slaves at an earlier time in his life, in his newspaper, who had actually advertised the sale of slaves, signed that, and his son said to the emissary of King George III, I will find my father. I will bring him into custody. And if necessary, I will hang my own father for treason. Think of that, the risk that these men took. So I say, when I get elected mayor of the city of New York, I will rescind this decision. This statue of Thomas Jefferson should remain in its rightful place as it has for 186 years through depression, through war, through peace, through all times of problems, in good times and bad times. He was a symbol to look up to, to say, this is what our country stands for. The freedoms that so many of us take for granted. And where will this stop? I looked at my opponent, Eric Adams, who back in July was with the extended family of Ida B. Ida B. Wells, the great African-American female journalist of whom I learned quite a bit about in patrolling in Chicago with the guardian angels there in the Ida B. Wells public housing complex. And he promised them on behalf of their great, great grandmother that he, when he became mayor, would remove from any of the street signs or the buildings or schools the names of people who had been slaveholders. And I said to myself, because he wasn't specific at that point, would that mean no more Thomas Jefferson High School on Pennsylvania Avenue in East New York? Would that mean no more Madison High School, James Madison, who created the Bill of Rights, which is at the epicenter of our freedom? James Madison High School that has produced Senator Chuck Schumer and Bernie Sanders and a whole host of other luminaries. I never once heard Chuck Schumer or Bernie Sanders say that that name should be removed. Then there's James Monroe High School. He was a slave owner. That's up in the Bronx. And even Van Buren himself owned only one slave, but has had a high school name on his behalf in Queens. Do we suddenly wipe out the images, the markings, the names of all those great patriots because they were slaveholders and slaveholding was quite common at that time. I say no to this revisionism. We are going down a slippery slope. When you go to Wall Street, what is it that looms over all the visitors, all the commercial and capital business that takes place each day? The statue of George Washington, should that be removed and put into mothballs in storage? Are we going to do that to the Thomas Jefferson statue? Are we completely losing our minds and forgetting our history that as a result of our American Revolution, we have led so many countries around the world to freedom? And the first country to follow in our footsteps was right here in Haiti. Haiti followed the principles of the American Revolution and were able to win their freedom from the French. And other countries have always looked to the Bill of Rights of James Madison and most importantly, the Declaration of Independence of Thomas Jefferson. So no to the removal of these statues, no to the removal of the signage and the names, no to the desecration of the history of what was the greatest revolution in the world because it paved the way for democracy and helped destroy monarchies around the world. So I'm calling upon my opponent, Eric Adams. Don't vacillate on this, Eric. 
You clearly went on record in July. You can't have it both ways. If you're saying that schools should no longer have the names of slaveholders attached to it, does that include George Washington High School in Washington Heights? Does that include Thomas Jefferson High School in East New York on Pennsylvania Avenue? Does that include James Madison High School, which produced Chuck Schumer and Bernie Sanders, leaders in our Senate? I never heard them ask for that. Or James Monroe High School in the Bronx. He needs to come forward and say whether the Thomas Jefferson statue should be removed from the city council chambers, whether the names that he said should be removed from the signage, from buildings, from edifices, from schools, include our founding fathers, our patriots, who put everything on the line, everything on the line. And because of the great musical that critiques that era, about the life and times of Alexander Hamilton, you notice even of late, even though he was not directly a slaveholder, it was suggested in history that he helped manage the slaves of his wife's father. And immediately that began to taint all of his contributions. Hopefully Eric Adams will join me in solidarity on this and say, no, we are not. We are not going to revise history. We will talk about the bad things of slavery. We will talk about those horrible conditions. We will talk about how a civil war eventually, eventually was fought where thousands died, thousands were maimed, where brothers were turned against brothers in the fight for freedom of the slaves of the United States. Hopefully he'll respond to that. And hopefully we will not allow Charlene McRae to do what she did to the Mother Carini statue and basically do a Julius Caesar in the Colosseum. Thumbs down to Mother Carini. She will be there October 21st, the head of the Commission on Racial Justice and Reconciliation on behalf of the city's Public Design Commission. She is in charge. She, a fait complete, will go thumbs down to Thomas Jefferson. I'm mayor, I rescind that, Thomas Jefferson stays in the city council chambers. Any questions? Where do we stop? Of course we see good and bad, but where do we stop? Is James Madison X, author of the Bill of Rights? He had slaves. Where do we stop? You had, out of the 56 signers of the Declaration of Independence, signing their death warrant, 41 were slave owners. Do we really think? that that was the desire of the city council at this moment. They haven't even been in chambers. You realize the rest of the city is returning to some sense of normalcy. The city council, and we've seen Corey Johnson, has spent more time away than he spent in the city. He's acknowledged that. I didn't hear that come from Corey Johnson. You would have thought the speaker would have said, you know, business is on October 21st. We want to hear from the city's public design commission and make the determination about the removal of the Thomas Jefferson statue, which has been talked about before by Corey Johnson. This was brought up by the mayor. I can see this as nothing more than a Michael Corleone decision to settle all scores on his way out. First, we're gifted and talented, and now with the removal of Thomas Jefferson. And who knows? Who knows? Where will this stop? before he's out in the beginning of January. Where will it stop? Do I think uh, the Mayor de Blasio, in his once again ill-fated attempt to be governor following on his four months of fighting uh, the scarecrows in Iowa, the casino blackjack dealers in Nevada, the uh, catfish uh, fries in South Carolina and, of course, uh, in Chicago, where he sought to gather support for his failed bid for the presidency. No, I I'm sure he'll make an attempt amongst the many Democrats. Uh, Governor Hochul, obviously, is running for re-election uh, for that seat. 
Maybe Tish James will run. Maybe Jumani Williams. But I can almost guarantee you over on the point score is that, yes, Mayor de Blasio will think about running and will launch an actual campaign to become our next governor. And if you've seen his reception of late, he gets booed by those on the right, booed by those on the left, booed by those down the middle. I'd like to see who, other than his wife and children, actually support this ill-fated maneuver of his to run for governor. I don't think removing the Thomas Jefferson statue is going to curry any favor with the voters. In fact, I think many of them will come to my own conclusion. Really? With the lockdown, with the mandates, with the high crime in the city, with people more afraid of getting shot with bullets than the two shots from Pfizer or Moderna? You have the Coulions, the chutzpah, to decide this is the time to remove Thomas Jefferson. Why didn't you do it before? Why are you doing it on the way out? And again, I say if this was a priority for city council. Why wasn't it Speaker Corey Johnson who said it? He spoke about it before the lockdown and pandemic. But no, he was Mayor de Blasio. And again, I think he's trying to settle all scores, scores now. And he cares not what it does to the city that he has single-handedly destroyed with a Miley, Miley Cyrus wrecking ball in almost every way. In almost every way. Absolutely. I, I've gone on record. Uh, let's use Robert Lee. Because remember, he was the superintendent of West Point. He had an option as one of the premier generals in America to side either with the North, to keep the Union whole, to free the slaves, or to side with Jeff Davis and the Confederacy in order to maintain s slavery and what they said was state rights versus the federal rights. He made his choice. He became a traitor. So was Stonewall Jackson. So was Jeff Davis. I remember going to Richmond, Virginia, and they have the Confederate Walk of Fame. They did have it there. And at the end, to appease all the credit, uh, critics of the Confederacy, they had Arthur Ashe, who was born and raised in Richmond, Virginia. They had him at the end. But all along the line, there were Confederates I couldn't even identify. And I even said to the guardian angels of Richmond at that time, why do they have these statues up? They're all traitors. So, yes, I, I have always been in favor of removing Confederate symbols. Also, the stars and bars, the flag of treason, all the symbols of the Confederacy, because they tried to destroy the Union and tried to maintain slavery. Any other questions? Hopefully, uh, you'll now do reverse osmosis and ask my opponent, who's been missing in action of late, a little tardy, a little bit sort of out of sight, out of mind, he's sort of off the radar scale, what is his position on this subject? Because he went on record in July. Nobody forced him to do that. In fact, I myself said, what does he really mean? Which individuals? He never mentioned Washington or Jefferson or Monroe or Madison. But he said he would remove from the signage in the city, especially the street signs, the edifices, buildings, and schools, those names who were associated with slavery. And having grown up near Pennsylvania Avenue, Thomas Jefferson High School, that was my first thought is, oh, no, you're going to change Thomas Jefferson. He never said that. But now it's front and center because he also said at that time he felt that no child should have to walk to a school that was named after a person who owns slaves. That would include Washington, Jefferson, Madison, Monroe, the men who put their lives on the line so that we could have freedom easily, if not for their actions. And remember, only one third of the colonies were in favor of independence from the crown. The royalists had two thirds support. New York City was a royalist city. So John Adams went and met at Francis Tavern. If the spies had been able to figure out how he entered Francis Tavern coming down from Boston, he would have been hung right there on, on Wall Street. They took incredible risks so that our country could be free. And can you imagine, many years later, we would all of a sudden remove the names of the very figures that gave us our freedom that so many of us take advantage of. Freedom of speech, freedom of religion, 
how many c countries in the world can say that they have those edicts in place and how many immigrants have come to our country seeking the freedoms of America and the religious freedoms that these men of the American Revolution created for us. Okay, thank you for coming. Appreciate that.